A New Mexico state representative says a political group is using dirty, creepy tactics to investigate her. And the head of that political group thinks she is telling one big lie and wants to catch her in the act. Representative Sandra Jeff's children and their dad live in Albuquerque, but Ms. Jeff represents Crown Point. It's about two hours away. She also says someone has been staking out and taking pictures of her home here. The dad snapped a photo of Pat Davis, who is the head of a left-leaning advocacy group called Progress Now New Mexico. Mr. Davis says he was there investigating whether Ms. Jeff truly lives in her district as she is supposed to. Jeff says those tactics are unfair and scaring her kids. I think that this is very dirty. It's, you know, ugly, and, and um, we're just really concerned about the safety of our children. It's fair game. I mean, it's, you know, people do this every day in politics. If you put your name on something and you swear this is that you're ready to represent somebody and this is where you live, you have an obligation to live up to it. Ms. Jeff is running for re-election as a write-in candidate against another Democrat, Doreen Johnson. Ms. Jeff couldn't run in the primary because she failed to turn in enough valid signatures. There is no Republican in the race. And this is not the first time the group has investigated where candidates actually live. Two years ago, they got Republican Johnny Luevano kicked out of a state rep race after they revealed Luevano was calling a vacant South Valley house he owned his home. All right, remember last month we had a report about whether public officials here in Bernalillo County were misusing a county program for their benefit? Well, that launched an outside investigation, and this morning we have proof the program has big problems. Katie Kim went on special assignment and found inmates on house arrest who were in a program to help clean up the county went to properties owned by Bernalillo County Commissioner Art De La Cruz and his friends. That is a clear violation of the rules. The team is only allowed to go to public places. Last month, the commissioner and the program's administrator told us inmates were never on private property. Well, we requested GPS data from the inmates' ankle monitors. That proves that statement is not true, and our investigation is bringing change to the program. What we need to do better is have a different neutral system that doesn't uh, allow that kind of activity to happen. The county's investigation is ongoing. To read the full report, go to krqe.com or catch it tonight at 9 o'clock on Tucasa. Sandoval County election officials are now admitting responsibility for the voting disaster in Rio Rancho two years ago. In court last week, county officials say they failed to supply the city with adequate voting equipment for the 2012 election, leaving thousands of voters waiting in line, some up to five hours. Former Sandoval County Clerk Sally Padilla had blamed the Secretary of State's office for not giving her all of the equipment that she had requested. Lawyers for the Secretary of State say they are pleased the county finally admitted to the mistake. Heads up, Bernalillo County Metro Court will be closed today while its employees take part in a training seminar. This means that things like misdemeanor custody arraignments, felony first appearances will not be held today. The county courthouse should be open tomorrow. Well, 535 now. The search for a killer is still on this morning after the breaking news we told you about yesterday of a young man being found dead at a gas station in southwest Albuquerque. Bernalillo County Sheriff's deputies say someone shot and killed Kenneth Perez at Coors and Blake early yesterday morning. He lived near there. And his family says Perez left their home minutes before the shooting to go meet someone possibly about money. But as far as they know, he did not have any enemies. He was out and about. He was just, you know, a very social person. He knew a lot of people. Just want to find out who did it. We just want to, yeah, pretty much just see why and who. So that's the story. If you have any information about the shooting, call the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office. Well, UNM is now trying to educate students and parents with the problems plaguing an off-campus apartment complex. The cottages opened up just a few weeks ago off I-25 in Gibson, and about 700 college students live there. Well, one weekend, take a look at this. Hundreds filled the streets for this huge party. Others who live there say it was so out of control, they were scared. Then this past weekend, there was a shooting. No one was hurt, and Albuquerque police arrested the men. They say were behind it. Well, UNM says because the cottages is not on the university's property or affiliated with it, all administrators can do is talk with parents and students about the differences between living on and off campus. We have programming, we have uh, RAs, we have all the comprehensive services that uh, create student success in the college environment. UNM Housing also provides counseling, after hours escorts, shuttles, security, and UNM police patrols. UNM says the cottages will no longer be allowed to recruit students at the university's events, such as freshman orientation and senior day.
New Mexico veteran is honored for his service two years after his death. Private First Class George Ayala joined the U.S. Army and served in the Philippines and Japan during World War II. He died in 2012. After his death, his daughter learned he was eligible for some prestigious military awards. That's when she contacted Senator Tom Udall's office for help. And yesterday, at a special ceremony, Ayala's wife, Martha, accepted several medals, including a bronze star. I wish I had done it before he passed away, but, you know, he would have just, I think he would have been just as surprised as we were that he had received so many medals. Mr. George Ayala started the company Quality Paper and Plastics here in Albuquerque with his wife and son.